I'm Ryan Anastasio, and you're watching an edition of Raving Ryan with Chairman of the Republican Party of Connecticut, J.R. Romano. Welcome to Raving Ryan. I'm here with Chairman of the Republican Party of Connecticut, J.R. Romano. Mr. Chairman, how are you? Very good. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Can you tell us a little, a little bit about yourself and how you ended up as the Chairman of the Connecticut um, GOP? Sure. Um, <clears throat> well, I um, was born and raised in Derby, Connecticut. Uh, I was fortunate enough to go to Trinity College to play football, and uh, while there, I believe it or not, ended up on MTV, and the executive director at the time um, saw me and offered me an internship while I, because I was still at Trinity at the time when I came back from doing the MTV stuff, and I took the internship, and I, you know... And what exactly did you do back. for MTV? I, I was on a couple different shows. It's, it's, it's quite embarrassing, and thank God, before YouTube. <laughs> so. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about what you do as chairman and what your responsibilities are? Sure. Um, you know, what, what we do at this uh, State Central is what it's often referred to as is um, there's a couple different tiers of our responsibility. First and foremost, we're responsibility for a lot of the organizational um, things that needs to be done, for example, organizing conventions for all the state and house res, uh, rep races and senate races, all the local ones, uh, the congressional races. When when who who are we nominating? Who are we going to nominate on a statewide basis? So state central is responsible for organizing, um, being in charge of that process for choosing delegates. Um, so that's one phase of what we do. Um, other aspects of our our phase, and and this has um, gotten. Uh, bigger as the years of progress, technology has grown. Um, State Central has turned into um, an organization that candidates can plug into for needs for voter identification, for training, um, questions about vendors, how to utilize social media platforms, how to message and, and communicate with the media. Um, so we're, we're almost as a um, Think of it like a parent organization yeah. that has, you know, all of our t other like local town committees are franchises that can plug into State Central for assistance. Um, and I, I think the, the, the third thing is, is that we are the uh, de facto leader. I, I'm the de facto leader of the Republican Party. I mean, obviously, we have uh, two uh, uh, Themis Claritas is the leader in the House. Um, Len Fasano is the, the uh, Senate Minority Leader in the, uh, in the Senate. And um, so uh, oftentimes I'll, I'll, you know, go on the attack against Dan Malloy or Jim Himes or whatever Democrat it may be because they don't have a candidate. Right now, Dan Malloy doesn't have anyone he's running against or anyone to really question him. And often Themis and, and Len do a great job of, of doing that, but I'm one of those, those people that, that kind of take on the governor. Okay, so Connecticut has been seen as a blue state, but you say it really isn't. Republicans have the majority in mayors and first electmen and only 12 seats away in the House. What can you and the party do to try to grab a seat in Congress this year and the majority in the House and Senate in Connecticut? Well, I think one of the things that we have to do is we have to be engage more young people um, and explain that the Republican Party isn't the party of, you know, this what, what Democrats like to describe us as. Um, you know, what it basically boils down to is, is we believe in people, and we want people um, to to be the best person they know how to be, and and um, you know that that's kind of you know if, if we communicate our message better and we organize and we identify voters who are upset about taxation or they're upset about a GE leaving or all these things, and and basically the the root cause of all these problems is Democrat leadership, and we plead our case, you know we're going to be okay. And can you tell us what the breakdown is between Republicans, Democrats, and Independents? I don't know the exact number, um, but I think on a percentage basis, the, the, the largest grouping is unaffiliated voters. Um, and I think 30% is, uh, I think, Democrat, and then around 22% is Republicans. The rest are unaffiliated or other. Um, like you just said, it is official. General Electric will be moving out of the state in the next coming years. State Democrats have said they would fix the problem. The departure of GE with many other companies will lose us thousands of workers and lots of money uh, in lost taxes and spending. Is it the Democrats' fault for the departure of GE and other businesses throughout the state? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> you know, one of the things that uh, companies don't look at things one, two years ahead. They look at things in terms of five, ten years ahead. And, and the Democratic Party, uh, who's been in charge of the legislature for 30 years, and, the, and, the, and now they've had eight years of a Republican governor, have kind of, um, you know, 
not stop spending, they're not curbing uh, uh, tax increases, and their liabilities are, are skyrocketing. Um, and so what these companies recognize is the future in Connecticut is bleak. Uh, you know, I, I love the criticism where, um, you know, GE left, did, didn't go to a tax haven, didn't go to Texas or Indiana, they went to Massachusetts. So, so nominally, they're not saving a ton on taxes, yeah. um, but they recognize the future in Connecticut is not bright. Later this November, it will be Election Day. All five members of Congress from Connecticut are seeking re-election, and so is U.S. Senator Richard Blumenthal. Last election, election Congressman Elizabeth Etsy won by a small margin in the 5th District. Do you think the Republicans will finally get a spot in Congress in Connecticut? Well, I think it's it's tough during a presidential year. Um, although this year I think it's going to be very different. I think Hillary, who is the presumed nominee if she doesn't get indicted federally, um, but um, <clears throat> there's no excitement for the Democratic Party. The most exciting thing the Democrats have to offer is a 70-year-old socialist. Um, and Elizabeth Esty is so out of touch with her district, I do think that she is wildly vulnerable. Um, obviously, we're going to need a candidate that's willing to work hard. Um, you know, you got to raise money. Anybody in mind that you have for that candidate? There's, there's three or four candidates right now. Um, <clears throat> one, two have officially announced. There's, there, I think there's a third announcing um, next week. Um, but, you know, they better, they better start moving. It's not an easy task. I mean, it's, it's – but – if any congr congressman is vulnerable this year, it's it's Elizabeth Esty. And um, in the third district, it was a Delora. She's been in Congress for like over twenty years. Do you think they should have a term limit? Because all these people have been. I believe in, the in term limits. I yeah, do. I believe in term limits. So you think like an eight years, something like that? Yeah, I don't. <clears throat> I would have to look a little further, but I do think that like a, a, a career in politics is, it it. it I don't want to use the word jade. You know, it, it it makes someone jaded, but you know they lose touch. They they really do, and and not that. Um, <clears throat> Rosa Delors is a bad person, but but there's a disconnect when you have um, Rosa Deloro declaring great things about President Barack Obama's policies when the country is not in a better place than it was eight years ago when he took over, um, and it's squarely on the Democrat shoulders. Um, Senator Richard Blumenthal will be running for re-election this year. Former Olympian August Wolf has already came out as a candidate, but former CNBC host Larry Cullar has not fu fully announced yet. Is Cullar going to run, and if he is, do you think he or August Wolf will beat Senator Richard Blumenthal? I, you know, I think uh, Senator Blumenthal is vulnerable. Um, either one of those, you, you know, you never discount uh, uh, an ex-Olympian and an athlete who knows how to work really hard. And Larry Cudlow, I mean, he's he's been... Um, around politics a very long time. Um, and I think what everyone needs to understand about Richard Blumenthal is this is a man who is wildly out of step with, with the values uh, of the people of Connecticut. While, while we're dealing, you know, he, he agreed with the Iran uh, nuclear deal. Um, while we're dealing with the, the Syrian refugee crisis and, and many people across the state of Connecticut um, calling for a pause to let's evaluate, you know, how we bring uh, some of these refugees in. Uh, Richard Blumenthal was, you know, talking about salmon. Um, you know, they're just, they're, there's, there's no priorities amongst the, the Democrats in this state. And um, all seven members are, um, from, uh, of Congress from Connecticut are Democratic. And do you think the problem is that people just voting for the Democratic Party because they don't know anything about the Republican candidates? Well, I think, in all honesty, I think with, with Barack Obama coming from, you know, uh, after George Bush, there was a, 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 an anti-Republican backlash. Um, but what after eight years, I think people are tired of, of what's happened. Um, you know, all you have to do is look at the state of Connecticut to see what long-term Democrat leadership looks like, and that's higher taxes, uh, runaway spending. Um, you know, Har Hartford is one of the most violent cities in America. It is the murder capital of New England. Um, again, it's a city that's been run by Democrats for decades, same, same with Bridgeport. Uh, New Haven. Um, you know, if Yale wasn't in New Haven, uh, New Haven would have some serious problems. Yeah. And um, Governor Malloy has had some clashes with state Republicans in the past. Even at one point, the governor called Republicans racist. Mm -hmm. Do you think Governor Malloy should be saying this to the people in your party? No. Um, what, what's frustrating is, is they don't want to talk about their failed policies. So what they do is they, um, you know, they'll say things like we're racist to not talk about the fact that GE is left or the fact that um, you know, you, you know, Hillary Clinton wants to, you know, Bill Clinton recently came to, to Bridgeport and, you know, he has, uh, some serious, serious, uh, um, issues with women. Um, yet they don't want to talk about that. Um, and so what they do is they, they, you know, they ridicule 
Um, there's an entire blog dedicated to how I hate women. Um, I grew up with seven. Um, and trust me when I say um, I, that, that is not the case. But this is what Democrats do, right? They, they, they want you to hate me or hate Republicans for some you know, non, non reason other than policy. Um, I can point to failed Democrat policy all over the place, uh, failure after failure after failure, and what they'll say is, well, you know, he hates women, he's a racist. Um, and that's their MO, because they can't talk about their policies, they can't talk about their successes, because there are none. And you think most people kind of can't know about this, like, how they've been attacking? Well, I think that it's, it's starting to become a little bit more known. Let, let's take, for example, when Republicans were critical of Obamacare, we were called racist, but, but what's happened is, is everything that the Republicans have predicted would happen with Obamacare has. It hasn't saved people money. It's imploding on, on itself. Um, people are angry. Um, the quality of, of care isn't better. The insurance coverage isn't better. And people are losing their shirts uh, to pay for an insurance. And these are all things that Republicans predicted. Um, but we're, when we said them, we were called racist because we had a black president. Um, so, uh, you know, I think there, people are starting to kind of wise up to that. Okay, now let's talk about the presidential race going on. On the Republican side, we have some very strong and bold candidates, including Donald Trump, Ted Cruz, Margot Rubio, and many more. Is there any candidate out there that you think would be the right, to ser right one to serve our country as his president? Any one of them. I would choose any one of them over Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. It's that simple. Um, ever since Donald Trump announced he was running, it is all you hear people talking about. Trump has been criticized by fellow candidates and many other people. Do you think Donald Trump has a chance to win the nomination? I do. Um, you know, what I think people are mischaracterizing as anger is actually fear. Um, and he's tapped into this fear that Americans have. Their paychecks are getting smaller. You know, they're getting afraid that they're going to get foreclosed on. They're going to lose their job. Um, you know, they're not going to be able to afford uh, to send their child to college or, or their mortgage payments. They're, they're afraid that what happened in France could happen to their family. I mean, it happened in San Bernardino. Um, and so... You know, this fear and anxiety is, is causing people to look at someone like Donald Trump, who is a take no prisoners, I'm going to tell you the truth um, type of attitude. And, and it kind of resonates to a lot of these people that have these anxieties. Um, and it's simply a byproduct of such failed leadership on the Democratic part. Um, and that's, that, this is what you're seeing. You're seeing Americans witnessing the, the, the free fall of the American presidency under Barack Obama, the, the you know, cutting the Iran uh, deal, the Obamacare mess, um, the Syrian refugee issue where we're having, you know, attacks daily um, across Europe, we, you know, the San Bernardino thing, and, and you have Democrats who don't even want to say the word Islamic terrorism. And, you know, Americans, they're, they're getting fearful that our politicians are weak and unwilling to kind of take the world on um, and protect it's citizens, and, and a guy like Donald Trump is, 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 is kind of capturing that anxiety. So I do think it's possible. Yeah, and Donald Trump is, um, um, in the latest Connecticut Star poll, uh, he got 35% mm -hmm. at the top of the pack. And um, um, some Connecticut voters are like, no, will we see any of the candidates visiting the state? They pop in here to raise money. Um, well, we may see one or two of them when it comes closer to our primary. Our primary is so late, so some, they're, they're really focused on South Carolina, New, yeah. New Hampshire, Iowa. Um, so, um, but I'm certain that, that, that we'll, we'll see some. And do you think um, someday you'd like to move the primary or earlier to get more attraction? It's not actually up to me. It's uh, up to the uh, legislature, which means currently the Democrats. So we're, our, our hands are tied a little bit. But, um, you know, we, my, I, I, it wouldn't bother me to move the primary up for us. And do you think um, the legislature would like to do that too? The Democrats will not. They're not going to do us any favors. Okay, in, in 2018, we'll, we will have yet another governor's race. In the past two elections, Dan Malloy has barely beat Tom Foley. Former congressman from Florida and host of Morning Joe, Joe Scarborough, on M MSNBC, has expressed interest in Connecticut's top job. Besides Joe Scarborough, Scarborough who else is interested in running for Connecticut's top job? Well, I mean, we have uh, a, some, a stellar bench in this state. Um, we have a slew of talented mayors and first selectmen. Um, you have Mark Bowen in Danbury, you have Mark Loretti in Shelton, you have Tim, Tim Herbst in Trumbull, you have Aaron Stewart in New Britain, um, you have um, litter, little, uh, lesser known uh, mayors of first selectmen, um, but, but really run their cities well, um, uh, North Haven, um, 
uh, Mike Frieda, uh, Ken Cocaine up in Bristol. Um, we have some great senators and first selectmen, uh, senators and, and state reps, Themis Claritis, Len Fasano. Um, you know, there's so many talented, young, um, and, and aggressive Republicans and diverse um, that it's going to be an interesting year in 2018. And um, has have you talked to Joe Scar Scarborough? Is, do you think he'll run? I have. I, I don't. I don't know if he if if he even knows what he wants to do yet. Um, but he is someone who is paying attention to what's going on in Connecticut politics. You've lived in Connecticut for your whole life. Connecticut is highly known for its great pizza throughout the state. What is your favorite pizza place in the Nutmeg State? Well, I was fortunate enough to grow up in Derby, which is location of Roselands Pizza, um, which has been there I think since the 1930s, um, and it is by far my favorite pizza. So. And you have a favorite pizza there? Uh, it is the, it's called the Special. It's uh, uh, mushrooms and uh, Italian, sweet Italian sausage. It's so good. And, it's so good. <laughs> um, and do you have any favorite tele television shows or movies? Uh, um, well, what genre, right? We're talking, we're yeah. talking comedy. With, no, um, Big Bang Theory. Yeah. Um, I love that show. Uh, Modern Family. Um, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, a comedy junkie. I mean, because of what I do, I like to just kind of turn off the brain sometimes. Um, so, you know, those those two probably are the ones that I, I watch the most. And, and the Goldbergs, which yeah. reminds me of the 80s, you know, when I grew up. And you watch any political shows? Because the past people we interviewed, they, uh, um, they um, have watched those. I mean, I, not not religiously. Um, I'll tune, If something's going on, I'll tune in. Um, you know, I'll, I'll watch the news coverage, but I don't tune in to Hannity or, or, or O'Reilly or anything like that. I, um, not, not on a regular basis. Too busy. Yeah. And what hobbies do you like to do on your spare time? I'm actually a CrossFitter. Um, I actually have a competition tomorrow. Um, so that would probably be the biggest hobby that I guess that I do. Um, <clears throat> but I just, I like sports. I like activity. Um, I've done two Tough Mudders. Um, so those count as hobbies, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, I'd like to thank, Jay, thank you for coming on the show. Appreciate it. And I'd like to thank my executive producer, Sam. Sam, you can come in. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on Raving Ryan. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'd like to thank JR for doing the interview. I'd like to thank Sam, my um, executive producer, for doing all the editing and um, filming it. And um, please follow us on Facebook, Ryan Anastasio, on Twitter, at RavingRyan1. Thanks for watching, and remember to subscribe.